Hello Power Rangers Lightning Collection fans and welcome back to Lightning Storm. The series where lightning always strikes twice. We talk about everything that has happened in the past week for the Power Rangers Lightning Collection. Now today, this was Hasbro PulseCon, as I should have grabbed the hat for it. Hasbro PulseCon happened today, so this is going to be the recap episode for everything that went down at Hasbro PulseCon. Now there's not going to be an episode of Lightning Storm tomorrow because there's really not going to be anything to talk about, uh, which is why I put out an emergency episode earlier this week on Monday uh, that was kind of going over some extra details over the stuff that I discussed in the last couple of episodes of Lightning Storm leading up to Hasbro PulseCon. So today was the panel. We had tons of reveals to talk about, tons of stuff not Lightning Collection as well, so there's going to be multiple different videos on the channel here in relation to PulseCon, especially with all the Cosmic Fury stuff we got because, whoa. But let's go ahead and talk about what happened for the Lightning Collection. So following the conclusion of Power Week last month, I was always kind of expecting Hasbro PulseCon to sort of finish up the back halves of the stuff that Power Week had started, namely Wave 13 and the Street Fighter figures, and that's pretty much exactly what Hasbro did today along with some other odds and ends and everything. Overall, just first impressions of the panel, I thought it was pretty solid. I'm sure this is not going to be everybody's favorite PulseCon panel or favorite livestream panel or whatever, uh, but I went in pretty much expecting nearly exactly what we got, and I'm very happy with what we got uh, compared to last year's PulseCon. I think they spent a pretty good amount of time, like, actually kind of dedicating it to focus on the figures and stuff that they were talking about, especially with the Astro Megazord that we're going to be talking about later in this video. So let's go ahead and get into it with Wave 13. So they did show off the actual prototype of the Dino Charge Blue Ranger figure, which was previously just like a 3D render and stuff during Power Week. So we can see here that this will in fact have pinless joints. It was kind of hard to tell if that was actually going to be the case with the render that we saw in August. But Coda here is going to be pinless, so it's going to be the first Dino Charge male body to be pinless, which is interesting because it's not the last time that we can use this male mold, but it's one of the last times in comparison to how many times we've already used it since the beginning of the line in 2019. So it's definitely interesting to see it here be a little bit modified. Now overall, I think he looks great. He's definitely a darker blue here than he was during his Power Week render, but I still don't think that's a bad thing. Maybe the render is a little bit more show accurate, but you know, some people will kind of complain about the color of him here. I think Koda looks perfectly good here and it completes our main core six members of Dino Charge from this wave. And speaking of completing teams or completing kind of core members of teams, we have Zoe, Beast Morphers Yellow, the other one that was shown off as a render during Power Week. So these two figures are not brand new reveals, they are just kind of showing off the actual prototypes and launching pre-orders and everything for them today. So Zoe here also looks fantastic, they talked about the timetable of Beast Morphers Yellow and how long it took for this figure to come out. And if you're not aware of the weird timetable that this figure had, back in like 2020 I did a video after PulseCon 2020 actually, uh, that talked about Wave 7 and how Beast Morphers Yellow was originally supposed to be part of that wave a very long time ago so Zoe has been a very long time coming I've uh, been bumped from wave 7 and now finally appearing here in wave 13 and I'm very happy that we can finally complete our main trio with Beast Morphers hopefully we get steel someday because I really want them to actually just fully finish the Beast Morphers team uh, but Zoe looks really really good now we finally have our first reveals of the second half of wave 13 these are the first brand new figures that they showed off today but they are exactly what I told you they were going to be for over the last couple of months and even some of them the last year since I posted the wave 13 leak back in September 2021, but the first reveal of the day was figure 131 for the Lightning Collection, the Wild Force Putrid. So this is a very odd choice, it is the foot soldiers of Wild Force, basically that version of putties or cogs from that season. They're definitely kind of, I would say, a deep cut. I mean, you know, putties are very iconic, cogs are pretty iconic, and the changas from the movie and everything like that are pretty iconic, but the Putrids, probably not on anybody's top of like wanting list or even remembering list that these guys exist, but they do exist. And I think they actually did a very good job capturing this here. It is a pinless figure, just like the rest of wave 13. So that's kind of seemingly kind of being what they're going to be going for here, you know, in the future, kind of get more and more figures to be pinless and like the double jointed, you know, female elbows and everything like that which is really, really good. I love all the design of the Putrid and the weapon and the effect piece and everything. I think it captured it very nicely for a figure based off of a suit that you really can't get like a really good angle of. I mean, kind of like the best pictures of it that when like you Google search Putrid, it's like the original Bandai figures from Wild Force. Any kind of screen grabs or screen grabs from Wild Force or Gal Ranger are kind of blurry and kind of hard to see. So I'm very nice, you know, it's very nice to see a very good version of the Putrid here in Lightning Collection Wave 13. 
And then the final figure from Wave 13 is of course Easy herself, Dino Fury Green joining the line, which makes it our second Dino Fury Ranger to be joining following Zato from Wave 11. And this figure looks really, really good. I think that they did a pretty good job on the Tessa Rao face sculpt. I think it's probably not as good as it could have been or should have been based off of the fact that they can actually like, you know, scan 3D sculpt the heads or scan the heads of the actors, you know, the current ones. It's easier to do that than it is for all these older teams and older characters. So I think it's just kind of the facial expression that they chose on Izzy is a little odd, but it does look like Tessa Rao. I think it turned out pretty good. Now for anybody wondering if this was going to include a swappable or removable skirt, it does not. It's not something I ever would have expected them to actually include, but you know, they didn't. So <laughs> that's perfectly fine. I don't care. It doesn't need to have one. It really shouldn't have one, but if they wanted to recreate that iconic scene from the first season of Dino Fury, I guess they could have done it, but like I said, I never would have expected that. But she does come with the Chroma Fury Saber and you know swappable hands and all that classic lightning collection stuff, and she makes a great addition to round out Wave 13. So Wave 13 at the time of this video should be up for pre-order right now. Uh, it went up at 5 p.m. Eastern time for Hasbro Pulse Premium members, and it should be going up at this video. It, this video is probably going to be releasing around the time it's up for everybody, or maybe even afterward, but it'll be going up for everybody for pre-order at 6 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Now, I don't know the actual release date for these that the pre-orders say. That will be up on screen here somewhere, uh, because I'm recording this before 5 p.m., so the pre-orders have not launched yet. I do assume that these are the $24.99 price point, the new typical price point, and some kind of early 2023 release, or maybe some kind of obnoxious middle of 2023 release these will be out probably by like march or whatever like you know the time frame that they said wave 12 is going to be out like march 2023 that's when these will be out so <laughs> just keep that in mind uh, wave 12 should be out more and more by the end of this year and this should be our first wave to come out in 2023 i would imagine i don't think we'd get these by the end of the year but there's always like a small possible chance that that would happen but who knows? Now in this wave you can see that this is the first full retail wave to use the plastic free packaging boxes that no longer use Tom Whalen artwork that have a render of the figure on the front instead of on the back and are relatively bland. They have somewhat nice artwork on the side which is not Tom Whalen. They really made it hard for you to see it on the stream and maybe the promo shots are showing it better but like I said this is before the pre-orders go live so I haven't seen if that's the case yet if we have a nice shot on the side. The back I assume should have some accessories renders and stuff back there and everything will be up on screen if this is the case. I think the boxes are okay. I think the Street Fighter figures did it the best where you have like that nicer backdrop that isn't just like an all gray backdrop. And I wish that the main figures had something special back there. Maybe even just the color of the Ranger that they are or something like that. Because everybody just being like that white gray background is a little bland. So hopefully maybe Hasbro can work on that a little bit because this should be our mainstay landing collection packaging style for the foreseeable future. Definitely for probably another couple of years I would imagine. So we're gonna have to get used to it here and it starts with wave 13. Now something that I really really appreciated was Pam and Jordan moved on from the Lightning Collection Wave 13 reveals to go into a Lightning Collection or what they call a Lightning Round of reveals or not really reveals but like teasers for 2023. So these are not full figure reveals so I'm not going to be counting these as figures like 133, 134 etc and we'll get to those actual numbers later on because these are not actual reveals they're just teasers kind of kind of like when they showed off like phantom rangers blaster last year or i guess a better example would be like when they showed off the ninjetti white silhouette last year during one of the fan uh, you know post fan streams so basically here they had a silhouette on screen for three members coming in 2023 and they said that their goal is to complete spd lost galaxy and dino thunder in 2023 now the silhouettes are pretty obviously spd yellow lost galaxy pink and dino thunder black which of course lines up to my Wave 14 leak video from a couple of weeks ago. So if there was any doubt on that being the lineup of Wave 14, there you go. It's right there. You can see the silhouettes of those figures. I mean, Lost Galaxy Pink is a little difficult to, to know for sure if that's Lost Galaxy Pink, but it is. Dino Thunder Blacks is so clear. You can see the, like, you know, that the uh, Brachio staff in his hand and everything like that. So if there was any doubt about that, he is coming to the line. Now, for some reason, they didn't show off a silhouette for Ollie, Dino Fury Blue which we know is coming from the leaked artwork from Power Morphicon and also from my video a couple weeks ago. So don't know why they bothered to show like silhouettes of three fourths of wave 14, but not the fourth figure, but this is not the technical official reveal of wave 14 yet. So we'll get there. Hopefully probably in the next stream or something like that, whenever that may be, uh, we'll probably see the full wave 14. But how crazy is it that we went from wave 12 taking months to wave 13 taking about a month and now we've seen three-fourths of wave 14. So now they're really blasting through it, uh, which is good. They needed to. They needed to get caught up on this as I kind of get back into the flow of multiple waves of year because we haven't really had that. 
Now, also, when they said completing teams, they showed a silhouette of Lost Galaxy Pink, but not of Lost Galaxy Yellow. Now, I don't know how Lost Galaxy Yellow is being released, but I said it during my Wave 14 video, and I want to make sure I say it again here. Lost Galaxy Yellow is releasing in 2023 as well. I've seen evidence for that, but I don't know how she's being released. I, at this current point in time, I just assume that it's going to be in Wave 15, because that just makes kind of the most logical sense, but genuinely don't know how she's being released so don't take that as a leak for wave 15 because i'm not 100 percent sure on wave 15's lineup yet there's some good stuff coming but i don't know the full lineup of wave 15 yet and i'm not able to share what i think it is so i don't know exactly when lost galaxy yellow will be releasing but it will be sometime in 2023 to actually complete lost galaxy but that wasn't it for teasers they did tease that in 2023 mighty morphin alien rangers is coming to the lightning collection so i'm very very hyped for this now interestingly enough and this is all i'm going to say on it they didn't show a specific figure or one specific figure from alien rangers they just showed the whole logo so i wonder what that could possibly be are we going to just get one alien ranger or are we going to blast through all of them i don't know but alien rangers are coming in 2023 and i'm very very excited to see how that's going to turn out now from there, they moved over to Black Nerd talking to the cast of Power Rangers Dino Fury and Power Rangers Cosmic Fury, which actually cut off Simon Bennett right in the middle where he was about to reveal the Sentai adaptation or elements for Cosmic Fury that they're going to be using. Now that is going to be, there's a lot of stuff to go over there. Big news happened for that. So I'm not going to cover that here because that has nothing to do with Lightning Collection. There will be a separate Cosmic Fury video dropping on the channel sometime this is a very busy day with a lot of talking you can probably already hear it in my voice it's slowly fading away so that video will come eventually i really want to talk about it but moving on from that we do have to talk about project reddick the astro megazord so we saw that reddick was the code name for the astro megazord i talked about that in my video on monday talking about the leaked photos of astro megazord now What's interesting is that Reddick, we were all making jokes about Red Dick and everything like that, but one of the comments on Monday's video actually pointed out to me that it's actually a reference to Josh Reddick, who is a baseball player for the Houston Astros. So I see what you did there, Hasbro. Very, very clever uh, with the codenaming on that. I don't know why they still had it say Project Reddick in like the you know thumbnail or like the demonstration lower third during the stream. But whatever, so this is the Astro Megazord for the Zord Ascension Project. And while I really appreciate the time that Pam and Jordan went into showing off the Megazord in its Astro Ship mode and also in its Megazord mode, it got hilariously overshadowed by both my reaction stream and everything. Everybody was being distracted because they posted the full version of the Cosmic Fury like panel on YouTube at the exact same time. So everybody was freaking out about the new Cosmic Fury suits and MMPR stuff. So it kind of took away from everybody, you know, focusing on them talking about Astro Megazord. And maybe that was intentional because Astro Megazord was leaked intentionally, or not intentionally, maybe intentionally, but Hasbro accidentally leaked Astro Megazord last weekend, uh, which I, I talked about in the last two episodes or two or three episodes of Lightning Storm. Lots of Astro Megazord stuff happened last weekend, so while I'm still extremely, extremely excited for it and very happy that they actually fully revealed it and that you're going to be able to pre-order it here today, it wasn't like the most exciting thing because we knew it was coming, but they did show off the scaling of it. It's like 14.5 inches. It's a very big looking Megazord. They showed off the six swappable hands. It's going to have the shield and the sword and the blaster. Tiny little ranger figures, of course. There's going to be a cockpit version of them for the Astro Mega Ship. There's going to be a cockpit version of them for the actual Astro Megazord in the shuttle head. Down to the detail of the yellow and pink rangers, like facing the opposite direction or kind of facing to the side, which is a really, really cool detail that they've actually included in there. I absolutely love this thing. I cannot wait to get it. I think it's definitely going to be worth its price point because CNET has reported, and we'll see in like 10 minutes. Um, it's like 10 minutes away from pre-orders right now. But right now, the reported price is going to be $165.99, so $166, the same price as the Zap Dino Megazord. And in this case, I certainly think it's worth it. I was expecting $200 personally. I hadn't heard what it was going to cost, and so I was very afraid to see what the price point was going to be on this guy. But $165? or 166 I guess, I think is actually really, really good. You know, we've never had a adult collector version of the Astro Megazord. We never got a Bandai Legacy one or a Bandai Japan Soul of Jogokin one. So this definitely, I think, is worth it to, uh, you know, have that first version, first collector version of it finally exist. I'm totally good with that. It's going to be a day one purchase pre-order. I'm going to hold on to my pre-order on this one. I think it's worth the price. I'm not going to wait for a sale like I am for Megazord and maybe even Dragonzord because I don't think that those are fully worth their prices. But here, 
I'm down with this. This is good. And if you want to get in on the excitement of the Astro Megazord, just like they did for Dragonzord like a month ago, there is a Zord Ascension Project Astro Megazord t-shirt up on Hasbro Pulse right now in men's and women's sizes. So I definitely am going to be ordering one of those whenever I place my pre-order for Astro Megazord. And I love that they show the distinction of it being MZ0602 uh, for the distinction of, you know, the, for the season being 06 and the episode first appearance being 02. So they've kept that up. It's actually accurate. I'm very surprised that it is uh, because they, that's their whole numbering sequence for the uh, Zord Ascension project is like season and then episode first appearance. And they got it right here. So I really like this shirt design. I can't wait to see the pictures of the box and everything, hopefully in like 10 minutes when pre-orders go live. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very excited for this one. And then from there, we had a little bit of Boom Studios talk before we moved over to the Street Fighter figures. Now, I told you guys during Power Week when the Ryu and Chun-Li ones were revealed that I had heard that there was probably going to be at least two more of these figures. And then Loretta even basically confirmed that during the fan stream during Power Week where she like winked at the camera and kind of was like the first two figures you know, that kind of thing. So we knew that there was going to be more. And, um, yeah, these are interesting. So these are kind of like the Andros figure where Lightning Collection just made something up. Uh, in that case, they made up that, you know, alternate head where it's an all black and space helmet. And then that actually ended up becoming canon via the comics. These are Lightning Collection original designs as of right now. They didn't say anything about if these are going to come to, like, Legacy Wars or Battle for the Grid or anything like that. I would imagine that would make logical sense to add them to this eventually, but as of right now, these are just Lightning Collection original Hasbro designs, and they're interesting. So we have the Morphed Kami Steaming Crane Ranger and the Morphed Ken Soaring Falcon Ranger. And these, they don't have as much love in them as the original ones. Now, obviously the original ones were designed by like Enway and Capcom. These, I'm sure, I mean, maybe Hasbro has some kind of involvement with those or some of them, but these ones, <laughs> They're very much MMPR inspired, with the MMPR like Pink Ranger helmet becoming Cammy's helmet basically, and Red becoming Ken's helmet. And I don't like hate these. I just feel like they feel very lazy and kind of strange looking compared to Ryu and Chun Li. Ryu and Chun Li Rangers, they felt very intricate. They felt very highly detailed and very very nice renditions of those characters if they were Power Rangers. And I get that here with Cammy and Ken, but it also just feels way too much of just let's just throw something together in five seconds and sell it as well. And the fact that there isn't any kind of basis for these just kind of makes them sort of strange. We've had toy line exclusive rangers before, of course, during the Bandai era and everything like that. But I don't know, these are not working for me too, too well. I'm obviously still gonna get them. I do think it's interesting and ambitious to see Hasbro create something exclusively for the Lightning Collection design-wise. But like I said, these are probably gonna get added to like the video games someday or something, because it's right there. Just take that design and put it in the game. But I know nothing about Cammy or Ken. I know Ken is a character in Street Fighter. Uh, well, yeah, I think about, I know he's a character in Smash Brothers. I know he's an Echo Fighter for Ryu. That's about all I know there. And they talked about how they've kind of mirrored Ryu a little bit here with some of the designs for Ken here. And I do like that they kept this whole bird thing going on because we had Hawk and Phoenix for Ryu and Chun-Li. And we have Crane and Falcon here for Cammy and Ken. But, you know, that's interesting. I still really like the effect pieces that you get, the bird effect pieces. And, like, you get really cool kicking effect pieces and punching effect pieces. And Cammy has this one that kind of looks like a Doctor Strange portal or something like that to me. Or some kind of force field or something. So, I don't know. They're interesting. The more I look at them, I kind of go, eh, I kind of like that part of it, or like this looks a little strange. I just, I don't know. They feel very, I wouldn't even say cash grabby, because I think that Loretta and Sam, who talked about them, genuinely had fun creating these. And I do, you know, think it's really nice for them to get that opportunity to just kind of make something new and kind of just make something up. But I don't know. <laughs> they just don't work super, super well for me. When I first heard that they were, we were going to be getting more than two Street Fighter figures, I was always very curious what those were going to be, because... There was only two Street Fighter Ranger designs in Legacy Wars. There's other Street Fighter characters in that game. I think Cammy's in the game. I don't even know if Ken's in that game, to be honest. But So maybe they'll port those skins over or something. But I really want to hear you guys' thoughts on these down in the comments below, because they definitely seem to be the least favorite reveals of the day. And I have to agree on that. They're just... Something's missing here. They just feel very cheap. Very much just, let's take MMPR and make it Street Fighter, which is kind of what the original designs did, but I just feel like they did more with it there than these did. They're weird. And then the final thing that Pam and Jordan had to show off today was the Hasbro Selfie Series, and they showed off versions of that for themselves, which was very fun to see. And yes, the Hasbro Selfie Series has officially launched on the Hasbro app, or the Hasbro Pulse app on iOS and Android. You can go there now, you can scan your face and get a figure ordered. Now, we talked about on Monday, the reported price of them being increased from $60 to $80. 
However, for I don't know if this is just PulseCon weekend or even if it's just going to be today or something like that, there is an intro price of $60 if you order them now. So if you get them today, they're actually $60, but going forward, they're going to be $80. So that's interesting. So I've already placed an order for one of them. I placed an order for a Red Ranger one, which I'm showing you on screen right now. That's how my face turned out or how it will turn out for the Red Ranger one. I still need to make one for the Pink Ranger and get that ordered, uh, but I haven't picked a facial expression with that yet. But that's going to be a whole other video. I've recorded, I screen recorded the whole process and recorded me reacting to it and everything. So there will be a separate video sometime. I don't know if it's going to be today. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow, but I'm going to be making a separate video about the selfie series and just the whole process with that. And then of course videos when the figures actually arrive. But if you wanted to do it and you wanted to get it for the cheaper price today, you got to try to do it today, or at least probably during PulseCon weekend before that price does go up to $80. Okay. So I think that's everything for Hasbro PulseCon 2022. For the most part, very happy with this panel. I'm happy that Wave 13 is done. Astro Megazord looks absolutely fantastic. I'm very happy that they did those teaser reveals for Wave 14 and the Alien Rangers. And the Street Fighters are, they tried something. There's some, there's, there's a, some sort of an attempt here. And the Selfie series is, you know, kind of hieratimous for everybody. We'll see how that goes. But that's all I got to talk about here today. Be sure to check out my reviews or my videos on Selfie series and Cosmic Fury news, which will be coming out eventually. This is going to be the first one up on the channel to recap everything from PulseCon. But let me know down in the comments below, what did you think of Hasbro PulseCon 2022's offerings for the Lightning Collection? What are you going to be pre-ordering? Are you going to be getting all these Street Fighter figures? Are you going to be getting Wave 13? What are you excited to see with the Wave 14 and Alien Ranger teases? What else do you want to see in 2023? What do you think of Zap Astro Megazord? Anything down in the comments below. I cannot wait to read it. I thought this was a really, really fun day. And I've been talking for a very long time. So I'm going to go rest my voice, get this video out, and make the other ones. So, of course, until next time, you guys can follow me on Twitter. I live in Ranger Key or Lightning Fig PR. And I'll see you all in Lightning Storm. The series where lightning always strikes twice.